damn, go get this money. Don't be a damn, go get this money. Don't be a damn, go get this money. Go get this money, you out with none. Just bought a stick in the can with a hundred. Give me a league in the can with a twenty. Shit, I always wish in the can with a hundred. I ain't spending on some nigga that done. That's what you need to do. This is the rap trap. You need to put yourself on the police's radar. Taunt the police. Taunt them so that, you know, you kind of got to, if you're not throwing rocks at the penitentiary, what the fuck is the, what's your angle? If you safe than a motherfucker. Why the fuck we listen to you? You can be around forever. We want artists that can somehow, some way, have the risk of going to prison for a very long time. This is what sells in 2019, 2020. If you're not at a high risk of going to prison for a very long time, I, the, the public is just not going to, because you're not gonna sell records. We need to get you the fuck, we need to find a way to make these numbers spike when they would normally, if you was out, they would go the fuck down. So just as soon as you get at your hottest peak to where there's nowhere to go but down, we don't want to still be trying to spend money or even deal with you coming up talking about, hey man, this new project gonna be the best project. We don't want to hear all that shit. Put you in jail. Now we can give you bits and pieces of your own money and you'll be happy because you all you want is a lawyer, maybe an appeal, and so we can just do you like Bobby Smurda, YNW Melly. The list goes on. We're gonna. Fuck all this letting the artists live through their prime. Fuck that. Go to jail in your prime. Come out gay in your prime so we can go to a new level. Die in your prime. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society. Today we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Welcome back to The Rap Trap. I'm Ayo Conseco and I do not have no fucking car mix. I don't know where the fuck my car mix is. Just put the head, I think it's the wrong head. I think this is the head that go on the Big Facts podcast mannequin. I think I put the wrong head on this nigga. But he's straight. He's straight. He all good. We're gonna get these shirts for y'all in a minute. Soon as we get fucking shirt man and fucking weed the fuck out. Um, but salute to him and his situation. Um, but I'm A.O. Conseco, fearlessly of A.O. Nation and the Men Too Movement. Um, as you'll re recognize in October. Um, and this is in hindsight. Um, obviously in hindsight what we do is we, you know, use our 2020 hindsight vision to see exactly uh, what we could have did different. Uh, we talking about Kodak Black, but I want to, before we even get into that shit, I want to shout out my niggas in Detroit who got in that comment section of that T. Grizzly video and let niggas know, like, nigga, look here, man. This shit... This rap trap theory that AO came up with is so much bigger than a fucking rapper in Detroit. My nigga, please. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck about no detail. At the end of the day, there's a woman who does not rap that was killed because she chose to be around someone who promoted and perpetuated um, a gangster murder, murder, kill, kill stereotype. And with that comes a spirit, and that's what you really have to understand if you don't believe it. Keep living, keep trying to make it work in the streets, and you let me know how that works out for you. Tell me if you get anything good out that shit. I'm not just talking about spurts of good shit. I'm talking about show me two years. Show me two years of prosperity whilst um, continuously promoting... Um, this murder, murder, kill, kill. Um, actually, give me one year. I'll, I'll break it down one year. Um, while I was promoting this murder, murder, kill, kill image. Like I told y'all before, even if you're not this fucking person, it's going to come to you. Uh, look at Lil Xan. Um, look at fucking... Um, fuck my man name is. Uh, 
Egghead, Slim Jesus. It's what it is. Like, you can't put on this fucking suit and not expect, like, you're speaking this shit, speaking this shit. Like, and it, you say a lie enough times and that shit will become true. Like, crazy shit. I was watching, um, Comedy Hype. Shout out to Comedy Hype. Um, and they were doing an interview with, um, what's the lady name? Um, one of the weigh-ins, Sean Shante. She's a dyke, though. And um, she was saying she got off uh, a stage. She was doing plays at the time. And she said um, she would get off stage and uh, her manager or agent would be like, we need to sexy it up. You need to show your titties. You need to, you know what I'm saying, dress sexier and shit like that. Be who you are behind closed doors. And what she said was, then I will not be comfortable in my own skin because this, we, we know this, this celebrity shit does not wash off when you get off the set. That's what. It doesn't wash off when you get off the set. When you go out into the street, you got TMZ, you got paparazzi, and you have fans. And they, and that's why, that's why I'm so highly against the makeup. The fucking makeup and the weave. Because when you come outside, Cardi B, and you hadn't taken, you hadn't took a bath and shit like that, and you just looking like yourself. Um, people are like, oh, what the fuck is that? And then you, I was thinking about this shit today. Um, when I was going handling that business, y'all will hear about that in a moment also. But when I was going to handle that business, um, I was thinking about, you know, what if some females, like a female at the um clerk's office that I was uh, talking to and shit like that. She was flirting too. She was really flirting, for real. I probably should have bit on that. Because I, I really do need help in that fucking courtroom. But, um, you have a, a band of female friends and, you know, you got a maybe an 80 year old woman and they're like, hey, let's dress you up one night and you come out to the club with us. Just, no, maybe not 80, maybe, you know, 60 or some shit like that. We're gonna doll you up, give you a makeover. You do that, and at that very moment, you're putting on a fucking costume. You're putting on a costume, no different than going out Halloween. Like, Halloween time, I put on fucking, you know, the white shit on my face, and I put on the fucking clown weed. It's Halloween, I couldn't imagine doing that shit every day. And when you're doing that shit, you're saying that I'm not appropriate for where I'm going. Why the fuck aren't you appropriate for living your life? Who set this goddamn standard that you... We don't got to ask that question. But why would you abide by this standard that is unreal for you? Because everyone else is doing it? In comparison? You won't compare? You won't stack up? But how does that make you feel when you don't have your fucking costume on? What, don't you want someone to love the real you? I'm going too far, but I'm just saying. This is what this whole thing is. This whole thing is all connected. Whether it being an actor and, and wearing a fucking dress and you don't, that's not really who you are. To being a fucking rapper and talking about murder, murder, kill, kill, and you've never fired a fucking firearm. You've never held a weapon during wartime. You've never, and even if the fuck you have, you didn't want to. That's not you. You was high as fuck. That wasn't you. If they would have ever put you in that fucking room, you would have never been able to come out that motherfucker with your respect intact. You're not finna stand up under no 20 years, so with, with you portraying this fucking character, you just all the fuck out of place. So now you gotta start putting people around you that represent this thing that you're not. And that's just my message to you. Um... But this is part of the rap trap. Today we're talking about uh, Kodak Black. Um, today we're talking about Kodak Black. And uh, this is just one of the, the main characters in the rap trap uh, series. Uh, time after time we've seen Kodak Black go to jail, come home, go to jail, come home. Same thing with NBA Youngboy. Damn near the same thing with uh, um, uh, Kevin Gates. Jack boy, the nigga up under the motherfucking uh um Kodak Black. And it's and it's what has to happen. Um if you're an African American 
and you're not mixed like a little baby. You know what I'm saying? Colorism does exist. It's real. It, this is real shit. Um, if you don't, if you don't look, when I say you're mixed, and I say little baby. I mean, you know, like you're you're fair to where now nah, you you might be able to go over here and do a little R and B shit and shit like that. You know what I'm saying, nigga? You favor fucking Adrian fucking what the boy name that made the song running, running. Adrian Marcel, something like that. He got a song called Running, uh, Shot the Tie. That was our shit. But, um. Hey, yo, what it do, man? It's your man, Ayo Conseco. I'm tuning in with the Big Face Podcast. One. I can't do it. I can't do it. That just ain't my style, dawg. I just, I just gotta keep it real. Look, dawg, let me holler at y'all. Look, I don't put that Patreon, them numbers for the Patreon. That's for AO Nation. If you're in AO Nation, you need to be a Patreon. I don't put all the videos. They won't be listed on YouTube. So if you want all the videos and shit like that, you need to be a Patreon. If you want to contribute to the conversation that we have every Monday night, we go live on the Big Facts Podcast YouTube channel at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to contribute to that conversation, have the call in number to where you can call in at any fucking time during those lives, you need to be a Patreon. I don't put those Patreon numbers in the men two numbers at the beginning of the show just so you can hear Winning Streak. As a matter of fact, if you want the whole Winning Streak single, all you have to do is send two dollars to the Cash App or the PayPal, um, and I'll send the song to whatever email is attached to your PayPal and Cash App. It's not that fucking hard. Um, but the Patreon is for AO Nation. I expect y'all to fuck with that. Um, and before y'all start asking, this hat is not for sale. Um, the markup on it is too high. I was just trying to see what that shit looked like for real. The markup is too high right now, so I have to sell that shit for like $30, and I'm not prepared to say that to y'all. Um, so right now we just have the men two t-shirts for 20 uh, Big Face Podcast. We got the new Navy Blue Big Face Podcast uh, t-shirt. Uh, 15 everything is 15 with the men two t-shirt then you got the big face podcast scully for uh ten dollars deal go to paypal.me forward slash are you serious 10 and put all your information in motherfucker um i salute everybody all of my niggas all of the men two men two men two members ao nation members that have been donating to the show as you know i'm a nigga on youtube so it is what it is so when you contribute it's a big deal to me, um, but don't go crazy. Uh, but every uh, third Sunday, we do the AO Nation donation conversation where I shout out everybody who showed love uh, within that period and shit like that. If you don't want to be mentioned during that show, all you have to do is put no mention and you won't be mentioned. Um, but I really do appreciate everybody who shows love every third Sunday. It seemed like my message has went out there to where people know if you're a small business, you gotta have at least $100 for promotion. Uh, if you're an artist, you need to have at least $200 for promotion. Other than that, just leave me alone. I do this shit by myself, but I salute everybody for really giving me my time, giving my space to do what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. So I salute you. you wanna go to work, let's go to work. If IG sponsorship shit is not doing shit for you, and you know that. So handle your fucking business, holler at me, let's get some shit done. I see y'all in a minute. Get the shit together, bro. If you're African American, your record, your criminal record before you came in this game is not going to be enough. The same way that an Instagram model has to take the paper bag test and shit like that, and once you pass the paper bag test, you get more perks, it's the same thing for rappers. If you can pass the paper bag test, then, you know, you don't really have to, you know what I'm saying, we'll just, it, it don't matter what the fuck you say. You understand? If you lighter than this paper bag, it don't matter what you say. It don't really, you know what I'm saying, it don't really, you know what I mean, as far as what I'm, what I'm talking about is, if you're speaking negativity, you still gonna have negativity come to you, but as far as having to prove your shit by actually going to jail and acting retarded in public, and really living this life and you know catching these charges and letting niggas know like nigga I'm really this for real. It, I mean I'm I'm out this bitch. It ain't nothing, nigga. 
No, the fuck y'all niggas think this shit is, nigga. It's out, man. Who? It's that shit. Like, you have to, and if you don't do it, then you'll just be dusted to the side. Or you can come out gay like Lil Nas X. All on you. But you're going to have to do it. If you if you can't pass this paper bag test, you're going to have to do some motherfucking uh, song and dance. And this is all part of the fucking rap trap. It's set. And I uh, I wanted Katrina to do this shit, uh, the female rap trap, but I might have to do it. Um, I know she she got a, a lot of stuff that she uh, she handles on her channel, whatever like that, and I wouldn't want to push nothing on her. Um, but I'm thinking I need to do the female rap trap because it's the same thing for them. Um, as far as what you have to say, the way you have to portray yourself, and it's no fucking different. You got a nigga over here that don't want this gangster shit to be like this for real, but he don't want to be on this gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's the only way you're going to sell records. Same thing over here with the female. Um, but it's kind of it's kind of more serious over there because no matter what fucking color you are, you got to be talking about dick, selling pussy, period. Or you take your ass over there with fucking tink, Dreezy, Tear a Whack, Rhapsody, uh, 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 fucking uh, Lady fucking Luck, and all them other, like, you know what I'm saying? Go over there and do that rapid and rap shit. If you want to be on, we don't need no type of lyricism. Cardi B, basic fucking uh, uh, City Girls, whatever. This, this, as long as you talk about sex, sell some of that good sex, and you good. If you don't want to sell no sex, uh, that's the door you go through right there. Yeah, over there. Yeah. No, go over there. No, 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 no. no, no. That, your door is over there. Yeah, right there. Mm hmm That door, that's that's the door leading to outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go through that door and just, you know, go back around the building. And as soon as you get ready to start talking about uh, dick and uh, selling pussy, you come on back around and we'll, we'll see what we can do with you. Appreciate it. Also, some ass shots. And some titty shots wouldn't hurt. There you go. Yeah, right there. Right there. There you go. And that's what it is. Once you enter this rap arena, ballerina, rap arena, all the things that you ever wanted will be allotted uh, uh, to you. You will have access to them. Um, and the puppet masters of this rap arena, the trap door, they're hoping that you have no self-control. This is why they bet you at the door. Before I give you all this money to fuck up, um, give you all the access to all the bitches that's going to take your money, I mean, all the dope that so you can overdose and shit like that, I need to make sure that you have no self-control. So did you graduate high school? You did? Uh, we're probably not looking for you then. Oh, you didn't? Okay, most definitely. Most definitely. You went to your GED class, you never finished? We can use you. Okay, um, what type of household did you come from? Uh, two-parent household? Uh, may I talk to my supervisor? Hey, he has two parents. Can't do it. Sorry about that, man. We just, we're just not looking for that type of artist right now. Your dad, oh, so... You had two parents, but he was never there? Oh, I think we can work with that. Um, how many jobs did your mother work? Was she around a lot? Not really. She was working a whole lot. We can use you. We can use you. Okay, um, what about felonies? Anything? The juvenile record? Yeah, I got a uh, juvenile. Yeah, I got, some, I, I got a felony, actually. We can use you. Come on over. Come on over. They need you to have because as a felon, that see, it used to be back in the 90s. They wouldn't, they wouldn't let you, they wouldn't sign you if you would. They called you high risk. That's what they called DMX, my favorite rapper. They called him high risk. This is why it was so hard for him to actually catch a deal. You know what I'm saying? Because he was like jail prone and shit like that. In 2000. Shut it up. Shut it up. 
in 2019, if you're not higher risk, we don't need you. TJ, uh, TJX6 just signed to Columbia. Just got the Columbia money. After that little stunt, whether uh, the real or fake U.S. Marshals came and got him on stage after he went into a fucking Wells Fargo and supposedly did a fucking scam. Why, why do the Carmelo, the Kobe Bryant? We're going to keep your legacy intact. It is you won't be here to enjoy it. I'm frozen because I'm trying to think of the fucking dude's name. I'm supposed to open my hands and say. He did the race. What the fuck is the dude's name that did the race? God damn it. <laughs> What the fuck is the dude name who did the race, man? See what I'm saying? They, they, they come and go. They in and out. Take K. I got TJ. See, I'm already on the new artist. I'm ready for him to go to prison now. TJX6. But T, take K. We not, we not playing these fucking games. It used to be an artist had a, a, a life. A fucking, you know. Damn near four fucking projects before they fell off. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. Uh, is I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's dark and hell is hot. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. Uh, and then there was X. The Great Depression. Man. Hard shit, man. Whoo. But then when you get to Grand Champ and, you know, all that shit right there, it's like, you know, we can go to Jay-Z the same shit, but he got a way bigger catalog. Do it with Kanye West. You know what I'm saying? But that was back in that, that's why you call it the golden era, because you can actually get music. But you know why they had such a long life back then? Because you didn't know all that shit about them. In order to find out about an artist's life, you had to read in a fucking magazine. You couldn't just go, uh, let me go to goddamn DMX page. Oh, he had a show last night. Oh, okay. You right on top of him. You right on top of him. There is no mystery. There's no fucking, uh, you know, magical shit behind it. No surprises. They all on their Instagram. Hey, Florida, uh, Club Elegance. I'll be there tomorrow. Y'all know how we doing. We going up. I'll see y'all in a minute. Love. Get your shit together, big homes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That bullshit, man, you know what I'm saying? It, it's just too much. You have too much access. And that's, I was talking to Katrina about that shit, too. Like, um, of course, you can you can shoot your numbers through the roof by doing a lot of fucking episodes. If I, I can do a lot of episodes of stupid rappers. What the fuck? 95% of the artists in the game are stupid rappers, and they have retarded fucking interviews. But I'm not, I don't... You know what I'm saying? I would rather, you know, I, I, there's value in scarcity. And I understand that. And I understand that, of course, you know, she said, they want you, they want you, they want And it's like, I, I know y'all want, you know, a, a, a thousand times more content, but it's like, I don't want you to see me like that to where like, I, I, I can't say anything in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Because truly, the consumer does not know what they want. You know what I'm saying? They just feel like they want it. Then when they get it, like, ah, oh, I'm cool on that shit. To where you don't even know why you stopped fucking with the Joe Button podcast. You don't know why the fuck. You know what I'm saying? You don't like the Breakfast Club no more. You probably never did like it. Um, I think Vlad TV stays alive because he has different people on there. But when you're dealing with, you know, uh, uh, you don't even know why you stopped liking uh, Mystical. No Limit. DM, I know I stopped liking DMX. To where you don't listen to none of their new music. All old shit. And if they try to come out today, like, man, fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? But that happens. You grow and shit like that. So, I'm just trying my own method. But, at the end of the day, I always say this shit, man, like, a judge, a lawyer, a prosecutor, um, a DEA agent, FBI agent, anybody who's used, like, so, 
This your first time being apprehended by the law. So you and this bitch, oh, I ain't, never, I ain't never been. But they just is calm, they calm as fuck because they, they do this shit. So they know all the fucking signs. Think about Joey Greco, the dude who did cheaters and shit like that. Motherfuckers, they have all kind of different emotions, but he's just focused. Like, okay, I know what you're going through. I've seen this a million times, but this is your first time going through this shit. You know what I'm saying? On camera. But he's used to it. So it's the same thing with these labels. They look at these fucking numbers. They can see everything. That's what you sign over. You sign over all the rights to everything. So they can see everything that you're doing. They can see where the peak was, where the people are fucked at the whole geographical um, uh, chart of where you should go to pop off and, and what you need to do next, what they think you should do next. But what they feel like you should do next as an artist isn't necessarily, most time it's not, the best thing for you to do as a human being, especially not as a black man. Whoever made the call to tell Lil Nas X to fucking come out of the gate, that was a fucking business move. You understand? That's why you have to salute people like Jay-Z. They can make their own decisions. But what Kodak Black is just the same song and dance. Um, I always say that um, these evil motherfuckers will come to you just so they can say that they came. Yeah, I went to Kodak and I told him, hey, man, you should calm down a little bit. But they'll say that and then say, oh, man, that, that, that new chick you got, man, she's bad as shit, man. You should calm down a little bit, man. Stay with her a little while, man. But And she's a, a, I got another girl over here. You know what I'm saying? So now they can actually say that, yeah, I told him to slow down, but you didn't mean the shit. Because him being on the edge and always in the news for being in trouble, this and, it, 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 it works for the label because now you can roll out all kind of shit as he's locked up as we'll see with all the artists that either die get a long sentence um and you should also understand in this industry especially right now even you know back when ti um got hit with all them guns in the house the most that you can go to jail for was like a year and a half Anything past that, your career is over because now you're trying to play catch up, trying to find out what's going on with this auto tune, and the whole fucking layout of the 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 music scene has changed, and and you you you'll just never get your footing back. And the next thing, the only thing you'll be able to do is fucking do a podcast about the things that you've seen because you know we have so many historians. That just love to find out what the fuck happens, uh, what happened. Uh, that's why comedy hype is. Uh, I, I really like that channel. Um, so you know he just played out um, facing. It's a fed charge, and he ain't did no time yet. So he pled guilty to a fed charge, facing up to ten years. So. They'll scare you with them numbers and shit like that. For him to plead guilty, his lawyer had to tell him something good, whatever like that. So, I what are we going to say? We're going to say about, they're going to hit him with three. You got to do 85% of that. So, he'll do like two. Maybe they'll give him two. And then a whole bunch of probation. But in my mind, though, these two things don't match. Being on probation and actively pursuing a rap career, they do not match. It does not work. So the label will send a fucking great lawyer down that motherfucker. So this is another way they can say we did everything we could. We did everything we could. And I'm thinking that the, the, the judge will take in consideration all the other time that, you know, he didn't fucked up on probation. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say about three. I'm gonna say he gonna do about two, do about two, um, but come out with three years of probation and believe me when I say if, if Kodak don't come out on some if he don't go full speed with that testimony shit that he was on, then he gonna he gonna kill his own career. He gonna kill his own career. He gonna make them CIA agents rich that that's running his label. And um, 
It's just gonna be another fucking statistic, another casualty of the fucking rap trap. A rap career in 2019, a gangster rap career. Really, no rap career. I mean, I'm some any you Vic from Vic Mensa, Lil Nas X. You name the fucking artist, and they will tell you that this is fucked up. I wish I could. I get so much fucking news, man. I wish I could, you know, um, why be in the mirror? He was talking about the shit. Like there is no, and I he do the gangster rap shit, but how the fuck? But he passed the paper bag test. Pursuing. Because niggas will not let you just be you. They, they won't let you just do your thing and rock. They're going to they gonna make you. They're going to start coming to your shows. You know, the, the, the fucking label might have sent them down there just to, you know what I'm saying, start some ruckus. Look how they chopped down for this two times. Lord, look how they chopped that man down. That's so fucked up. Fucked them all. And it's just like, I salute money bag yo. I, I'm salute uh, money bag yo because he didn't stay out the way, but that's the difference. Money bag yo about goddamn 32 years old. Niggas just keep this whole shit shaved the fuck down, and that's that's really what the difference is. Um, and that's also the difference of um, I don't know. I mean, because look at you know what I'm saying, money bag yo and black youngster. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just, I ain't just talking about um, but I don't like this 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 gangster shit, man. It just it it puts a spirit out there that just surrounds you, and then when 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 people come, it's just like you're not living right, you're not living right, and you understand you're not living right. But this this rap career. It's not for you to live right. It's for you to make a whole bunch of money. A whole bunch of money. And then this nigga ain't, you know, you're not wise with your money and shit like that. But nobody can't tell you nothing because, like I said, this the amount of money that he gives you, it puts you in a grown man position. If you got this much money, you must be smarter than a motherfucker. Even though we know money doesn't equal intelligence. But we operate as if it does. So... When he say, let's do some retarded shit, well, I'm going to do some retarded shit. Nobody can say shit because I say something, I'm getting put, pushed away from the fucking money. And that's why I blame the people around the artists a lot also because you sold your integrity. You know that what he's doing is putting a lot of motherfuckers, yourself included, in danger. But yet and still, you walking because you're just trying to get any kind of, any nugget that he drop on the ground, any gram he dropping it. Dollars on the ground, you're trying to, because you don't see yourself being able to do shit. Shit, I'm a rap too. Shit. And you not, shit, I, I, shit, I, I, I can be just as big. And it's like, you know, niggas just can't hear. So that's why niggas have to go through these things. And that's why we go through this right here. So you can understand that the rap trap is a real fucking thing. You can pay attention, listen, and take heed. Be wise, learn from the mistakes of others, or go out there and learn from your own mistakes. But understand that once you enter this thing here, they're going to throw everything plus the kitchen sink at you, trying to get you to fuck you on a fucking tightrope. You was on a tight. Oh, she's trying to dodge shit. Fuck, man, I'm trying to get this goddamn money. Fuck, man. Did these motherfuckers just goddamn, man? What the fuck? Just trying to balance shit. And you can name on one hand the people who have successfully made it through the rap trap gauntlet to the other side and still be successful. We have yet to see these new artists do it because they're new artists. They haven't went through the time where they're not hot. hot. You know what I'm saying? And the only money they make is off their tours because people want to deal, they just want to feel nostalgic. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, you know when fucking testimony was hot? Uh, uh, um, Kodak Black song. Uh, you remember when uh, 
expeditiously was hot or uh, flocking was hot. Oh man, let's go see Kodak, man. He's gonna be at the fucking casino. They don't, you have, they haven't had to live through that. And that's truly, that's gonna be the true learning, um, learning curve because now you have to live below your means. Nigga, you stand in an apartment complex and you trying your best. The child support fucking payments is wearing you the fuck down. And then you look at the artists before you and you see they went through that. They was hot as a fuck, but now they getting buried by child support payments and you niggas just stood out this bitch. Not not being wise by learning from other people's mistake and making the same mistake all over again. Um, but that's what you want to do. That's like, and that's really, that's what the fuck you have to do. Another part of the rap trap is, if we don't see the money that you're getting, we don't believe that you're getting it. Unless you can pass the fucking paper bag test. If you Drake, it's all good. He ain't got to show you money. Even though he, sh he showed niggas with that fucking house he got. He showed niggas with that shit. But for us regular niggas, we got to put that shit on every fucking nigga. If they nigga, fuck that shit. I'm going to get me an ankle bracelet. I'm going to get me an ankle fucking chain, nigga. Show you all this fucking money I got, fuck nigga. Because I don't feel like shit up on it. When I take this shit off, I feel just like a bitch that took off her makeup on her fucking wig. I feel horrible. I ain't shit. Let me go buy another car. That's something different now. Yeah. That's something different. That also comes with the rap trap. The depression. Um... For T.I., it would be when um, Falunt got killed. You know what I'm saying? Like, what I was doing, me trying to show everybody in the whole world that I'm just a real gangster nigga and I take off on any nigga anywhere. Did that shit happen in Ohio? The owners, shout to Big C, shout to Katrina, shout to, uh, who else in fucking Ohio? If I forgot you, I, I apologize, but... Dog, I didn't learn so much, man. I really did not, you know, come from Alabama, I really thought there were a number of white folks in Ohio and shit like that. Like, that, Ohio is kind of like Idaho or fucking, you know what I'm saying, like Wisconsin. You know what I mean? Like, but, dog, there's really some shit going on with that bitch, dog. But, um, yeah, so them niggas, you know, you trying to show the whole world that you really that gangster got your close partner killed. And that was another example of the rap trap. Because I'm, if I was a regular person, and nobody was going to know about it, excuse me, bro. My fault about that. But because I'm an artist now, if a nigga, because a nigga just bumped me in the club and me not, you know what I'm saying, taking off, that shit going to be, oh, man, nigga that slapped T.I., man, and robbed his ass in the club, bro. That nigga ain't do shit, bro. That nigga ain't do shit, bro. And that's the aura that comes with what you do because you're speaking to the hood, the street, the poverty stricken people and if you're not trying to elevate their mind but it's so hard to do that because it's so tricky to do that because as we've seen with T.I. as we've seen with Jeezy I'm sure a slew of other artists when you was Jeezy the snowman, I make it winter time Heard you niggas hungry. Was it uh, like, man, that, that shit was so that that fucking trap or die. That shit was fucking crazy. But when you start talking, my president is black. My Lambo nigga was still fucking with him then. But when you start showing progress and positivity, it's like, oh man, that nigga was mother shit. Man, I'm trying to be not. Niggas don't want to hear about what they should be doing. They want to hear about what they're doing at that very moment. Smoking a blunt. You know, just getting high. Being mad at niggas. Ready to kill niggas at any moment. Because shit ain't going good, dog. I'm telling you, as soon as you get something going for yourself, all that gangster, gangster shit, dog. Once you have something to live for. You'll, you'll truly know if a, uh, if a nigga loves his children. By how much he cares and loves himself because you are the leader you're the only thing nine times out of ten you're the only thing that's going to keep your child 
from being a fucking statistic, whether a baby mama at 15 or a fucking inmate or a fucking uh, uh, statistic in the street from a police officer at 13. If you truly love your child, my nigga, this, oh, this is my life, that's my heart right there. You would allow a nigga to disrespect you. That shit don't, no, I'm good on that because I know whatever I do right here is going to, whether I kill him or I don't, I'm putting my heart, my heart's future at risk. I don't, I don't listen to words that much. I, 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 body language, your actions speak to me more than anything. Niggas be talking, bitches do too, but I'm, I'm speaking to the men right now. Um, We insane. We very sick right now, man. We very sick as, as a community right now. Um, we so sick now. I mean, it just we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't take out no acts of violence on nobody else but ourselves. If it ain't us, we don't want our shit. I'm, I'm straight on that. I'm good on that. White man call you nigga and everything. All right, all right. Let me catch you. Let me catch you. Let me catch you. The whole nigga, the whole motherfucking situation got to be perfect for you to take off on a white man and call you nigga. But a nigga can bump you anywhere. And it's, I didn't see, I seen these little niggas in New York chase a op in a courtroom and still be chasing them. Like, come on outside, come outside, nigga. Come outside. Come outside. Oh, this nigga scary, man. Oh, this nigga scary. Because we just hate what we see in the mirror. There's no value in that. Nobody care about me. I'm a black man in America. I don't play no fucking sports. I don't do no fucking rap. Nobody go. I do rap, but nobody care about my fucking rap. I'm a fucking nobody. I could be on TV tomorrow from a fucking police officer killing me. People would fucking be mad online, but wouldn't do a fucking thing for me. I'm nothing. I'm a broke nigga in America with a gun and a fucking drug habit. Why you a fuck about me? That nigga look just like me. Nobody give a fuck about him neither. I don't give a fuck about him, so I respect him. Fuck him. I wish that nigga would look at me too long. I'd kill that nigga. Anywhere. And that's the problem. That's to me so much bigger than any one fucking rapper. Because it don't today is fucking Detroit, today is fucking Florida, tomorrow is gonna be Philadelphia, next day New York, the next day fucking Alabama, the next day fucking Ohio, the next day New Orleans, the next day Seattle, next day Carolina. It don't matter who dies, who get killed, we never gonna stop killing each other. 